The Panasonic G9 is a camera that was originally designed for photographers. However, with Furmire 2.0, it adopted many of the high-end video features of the GH5. So, is this now a camera that you should consider for filming weddings? So before I begin this video, if you're a bit of a camera geek or if you film weddings, then why not subscribe to this channel because we've got loads of great content on here. The G9 is part of the Micro Four Thirds system and therefore you have access to all of the native Micro Four Thirds lenses. These are always smaller and lighter than lenses on other camera systems. So it's great if you're a wedding videographer because you can take a few with you and they really weigh nothing at all. If you are coming from a different camera system, whether that be Canon or Nikon, you can buy adapters that allow you to use their lenses on this system as well. One of the best features of the GH5 got even better on the G9, and that is IBIS. IBIS stands for in-body image stabilization, and it basically means that you can get incredibly smooth handheld shots with any lens, whether it's a stabilized lens or not. It's ideal for weddings because a lot of moments that happen are spontaneous, so being able to just lift up your camera, not needing a tripod or a monopod, and just capturing that moment before it disappears is absolutely crucial. The IBIS on the camera is so good that when we shoot with a wide lens we can even walk backwards during things like the confetti shot without the need for a gimbal. <laughs> Additionally, Panasonic have a feature called IS Lock. You could be at a really long focal length and record handheld and instead of having gentle sways it will lock on and replicate the look of shooting on a tripod. If you like to shoot using the LVF, this is even bigger and better than it is on the GH5. The screen is a tiny bit smaller than the GH5, but both are razor sharp, so it's really easy to make sure that you get in focus. Also, the video features on this camera, resolution, you've got up to 4K60, just like on the GH5. great if you're shooting slow motion during the day whether that be the couple shoot or the first dance and if you want to shoot super slow motion you can drop the resolution to 1080p and shoot up to 180 frames a second. If you like to shoot in 10 bit the camera can do this internally up to 4k 30p. We're perfectly happy with 8-bit recording ourselves and it's been fine with grading but if you do want 10-bit you can do it internally. If you want to shoot at 4K 50 or 60 you just attach an external monitor and the camera is capable of that as well. Just like the GH5 this camera has some really great tools to help you with focusing and exposure. You've got zebras which are great when you're exposing for skin tones. You can set the zebras to 65% and then as soon as you see them on the face you know that you're going to get really nicely exposed skin. You can also set them at 100% and then that will show you when you've got parts of your shot that are becoming overexposed. The peaking is a really useful feature if you're trying to track with a bride who's walking down the aisle you can make sure that you keep her nice and sharp. One disadvantage that this camera has compared to the GH5 is that the recordings do have a time limit. On the GH5 you could keep it recording until either the memory card was full or until the battery ran out. It was a great feature to have for church ceremonies. However, on the G9 the, the limit is 30 minutes. Let's talk about audio a little bit. We've got a little port on the top where you can plug in an external microphone. We usually use the Rode VideoMic Pro and it gets really nice results. You've also got a headphone socket so you can monitor audio while you're filming weddings. And on the side here, you'll see these dual memory card slots. This is great if you're a wedding videographer because it means you can put two cards in and record onto both cards at the same time. We've never had a memory card error yet, but in the case that you did have one, it's good to know that you've got a second card that will have a, a copy on there too. Now let's talk about the image quality that you get from the G9. 
just like the GH5 you get really beautiful colours you've just got to make sure that you get the correct white balance I find especially if you're shooting in mixed lighting conditions however if you get that white balance spot on you're going to be really pleased with the colours you get out of this camera in terms of low light performance it performs very similarly to the GH5 we find that we can shoot uh, ISO 800 quite comfortably and at a maximum we'll push that to 1600. Beyond that things to got, start to get much too grainy. You need to make sure that when you're shooting in low light use prime lenses as they're going to give you the best results. So in conclusion I would say that the Panasonic G9 is a fantastic camera for wedding videographers. Firmware 2.0 changed everything the camera adopted many of the important video features from the GH5 and became a real video powerhouse. There's a couple of features that are missing, but they're for really high-end videographers, maybe outside of the wedding field. So for us, it's perfectly fine. The one thing that you do need to be aware of is that 30 minute time limit. Make sure that if you're a solo shooter, you have one camera in your kit that has unlimited recording for when you need to record long church ceremonies. However, beyond that limitation, this really is fantastic. And the two or three hundred pounds that you'll save in buying this compared to the GH5 will be better spent on lenses or other equipment that you might need. If you've enjoyed today's review and you're thinking about buying the G9, you'll find a link just in the description below. Please be sure to give the video a like too. If you have any questions, pop them in the comments and subscribe while you're here because we've got loads of more great content coming soon.